Hey guys, welcome back to another quick video. I wanted to show you guys that today I worked more on the multiplayer code and I actually have the concept of multiplayer working in the launcher. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys what this looks like. This is very early on, but I just wanted to show you the concept and how it kind of works and get your guys input. I'm gonna be putting out a poll here in the future uh, to get some feedback from you guys if this is gonna be something that you guys are really looking forward to, if this is something that you're looking forward to using uh, in the sense that I have a couple of ideas of how this could actually be used as a public uh, launched uh, hosted game to where you could actually um, broadcast that you have that you want to play a public round and people inside the community could see you know what your faction is uh, if you've set it to public if you're on private uh, it won't show up but if you set it to public uh, I'm looking at trying to set this up to where uh, the discord channel would actually advertise the fact that you have a public server and then potentially also setting up a tab that shows the publicly hosted games that are currently available what this would allow you to do and essentially the back end of what this is doing is that when we go in here and click host uh, it's actually going and it's getting all of the mod data that you have available uh, in your installed game and then it's actually hooking into uh, Google Drive and it's creating a folder uh, with this unique key uh, once you've established that code, it's essentially setting up a session JSON uh, that then says who the host is, what their faction is, uh, and a bit of information that I'm using uh, to establish clients. So then from there, uh, when you go to join this, so essentially if I'm the host, uh, what I would do is, is I would just hit refresh here and I've currently got it set up to where it's gonna give me an error. Don't worry about that. Uh, it's just letting me know. Uh, so I refreshed and I have no clients currently. So no one else has set their game files to be a match uh, for my for my game. Well, uh, if I want to simulate what that looks like, I can actually do, I can join this uh, in a concept because we're not actually connecting IPs. We're connecting data to the byte. Uh, and so the idea here is, is that if we click our key here, and we go here we'll enter the text and then we'll hit join and what that's going to do is it's going to immediately create a backup of all the files that i have on my local system uh, so if you're the client what i'm looking at establishing is an ability to essentially make um, even the idea of like presets of mods. So you could actually hot swap your save game files. You could hot swap uh, your actual mod data so that when you join someone's session, uh, it backs up your current data and then it downloads theirs and replaces it. So all of mine have, all of my data has now been backed up and I've now pulled in this case, I'll need to continue to test obviously, but in this case, I've pulled my own data down onto my computer from Google Drive. Um, and so then what's gonna happen here is that after it successfully extracts the files and successfully backs everything up, if I click this refresh again, uh, it should show that I now have a match. So this person, if this is someone that's on Discord, could then uh, reach out to their friend or whoever and basically say their game is ready. So however they're connecting either through Epic Games or Steam, sadly the users will still have to share Steam IDs. Uh, I don't have a way of, of actually you know establishing local connections or anything like that between players. But essentially what this does is it eliminates the need for players to have to prepare any of their game data. Uh, you can see this green light over here underneath my name. That is basically saying that there's a file match now between the, the host and the client. So from here, you would just both launch the game after you've added each other on Steam, uh, and then you would immediately go into the game. So uh, how the factions come into it is that in the future, I will have faction-specific missions, fas faction-specific modifiers to the game, uh, such as, for example, if you choose a specific faction uh, and you encounter those factions in the game, uh, 
they'll be friendly to you if you've selected that faction. Uh, this is where you can also get companions. This is where you could also have people follow you and actually build small armies of these people um, inside the game. And then I'm also looking at adding traders to the game that only show up if you're a friend to that faction. And this is just some of the very small ways that I'm planning on implementing the faction selection. So as you're actually selecting that faction inside of the Discord, um, you're actually going to see what that looks like in the game. I also have for character selection, as you're choosing your different faction, I'm actually going to make it to where the characters that you can choose, uh, some of them when you're starting a new game, will have styles based on the faction that you've selected. So a lot of the launcher data is actually getting updated to where the launcher itself will become the mod. So how I was working a lot before to inject a ton of code into the game, I'm actually pulling a lot of that into the launcher so that these files continue to last as long as possible for future updates. So players don't have to worry as much about features breaking and that kind of thing. A lot of this stuff will actually get written into my own game engine uh, so that it's injected into the game and you guys as far as multiplayer goes as single player, uh, you guys can just immediately enjoy the content and the modifiers. I'm looking forward to your guys' feedback. Please let me know your initial thoughts. Let me know if you guys would use this system. I am looking at adding you know, that public broadcast, so this is super easy for future players to uh, start playing co-op together. And then also one additional detail is that essentially because of the in-game modifiers, in order to get that data to match, I still have not, I, please let me know if you have time for testing. I have some ideas based on Dying Light 1 on how potentially we could try to set up code that is not an exact match between the host and the player. Uh, I'm not sure yet whether or not that will work, so I need to test with someone, uh, someone in the future. But the idea is, is that if when installing, you chose a unique character to you, sadly, currently, they're duplicating player one for all the characters. So as you join a game, you are all joining as player one. Uh, so because of this, your data has to sync up. So the current plan is to basically choose, be able to choose skins for all of your different characters. So you as the host could actually go select uh, the appearance uh, for each person or or potentially even going and setting up this, uh, their uh, selections could actually come over to you. So what this does is it sets up data that when you're setting up the install, it will actually uh, set some of these things such as the selections that they have for skins and that kind of thing. So there is some chance here that there'll be a swap of information or at least a merging of information between the host uh, and the client, but I'm still looking at what that does for the sync values. So uh, we can't have users actually losing their sync values and not able to properly get um, their data syncing between the network. So stay tuned for uh, updates here in the future, but a lot of great things coming the way, this way uh, for the launcher. Uh, it's been a fun week and uh, I look forward to hearing your guys' feedback and thank you for watching. Look forward to talking to you next time. Have a good weekend.